bad today. Yeah, I think we've had I think we've had crazier days so far. So I'm I'm uh, uh, this this one today's a little lighter. We just we got to do some some other press later this afternoon. But so far it's not not so bad. What's up, man? Can I get you to put your camera back the way it was on its That's side? Good. It looks better All on right. the. There we go. Perfect. What's up, man? Right. I am just. <laughs> I am delighted to be joined by Sean Morgan of Cedar. Sean, I'm actually talking to you. This will go out in a couple of days, but I'm talking to you. But mere hours after your album has been released, uh, See This Pace and Parabellum is out now. Um, what's release morning like in a social media age where you get, I'm sure, overwhelmed by feedback yeah. this morning? Like, how's it been? Uh, it's been great, man. I, I tend to stay away from uh, reading reviews because I'm terrified of them always. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't have, I, you know, I, I, I'm just, I don't know. If one, one negative thing could throw the whole day off for me, so I tend to let other people read them and, and give me the feedback. But um, you know, I woke up this morning, had to do a couple of interviews for the radio stations, and then um, we have this, and then I, I, we, I will head over to the studio this afternoon to do some more rehearsal and stuff. So it's 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 a it's kind of like a, a regular everyday day, um, except that it's this this when I go to the store and pick up the, a copy of the album will, will be when it sort of becomes a reality because then it, then it's like then it's now officially out. I'm holding a copy in my hand and um, then we can just let the games begin. You know, is it nice to be able to say I'm going to rehearsal to be able like because it's been such a mad couple of months. Like I've been talking to musicians that. are crawling the walls without yeah. touring so even just a little slice of normality that's like heading to rehearsal for your big stream coming up like has it yeah. been nice to have something feel at least a little bit normal uh, over this period yeah i think it's it's nice to to finally have um the ability to play music because i haven't played it and you know i haven't played with the guys in the band for almost a year at this point and I haven't seen some of the guys in about six months. So it wow. happened at the, we were hanging at the house and it's kind of cool. It's like a little mini summer camp that we got going on. Um, but it is, it's, 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 it's a crazy time to think that to say something like, oh yeah, we're playing a show. It's, it sounds insane. You know what I mean? It, it sounds, it's, yeah. such a, it's such a regular thing. And it's such, an, it was such a big part of our everyday lives that to now have to make a regular sentence sound like something that's completely alien is bizarre. But, when, what? Yeah, where was this rec where was this record made then sean if you haven't seen the guys for six months like this yeah. record must have been recorded a fucking long time ago <laughs> uh we finished it in 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 february so it's it's been good to right. go for a while and it was supposed to be originally be out in june which was then pushed back to july and then which was then pushed back till today so it's because because of that i mean well usually though once you finish an album it, it, it's about a six month setup period where, where they, they put out the single they do a bunch of press um, and you you start booking a tour, obviously, but um, this time around, obviously, that's been different. It's, it's it's kind of in line with that timeline, maybe a little bit stretched out. Um, but yeah, it's been done, and and I, honestly, I was I was convinced it was going to get postponed again. But um, I think we came to a point where we just said, you know what, it needs to get out. We need people to hear new music because I've I've myself burned through all my playlists, and I, I've done I don't have any. Yeah. You know, so when a band puts out a new song, I'm 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 very grateful, and I and I, th I think it's awesome because it's finally something new to listen to from a band that I that I like. So you know, there's been there's been two schools of thought. Some people say don't put music out, postpone until next year because you can't tour. I don't know. I think I think you can still do it. You can still put music out that doesn't require a tour to sell the the album. You know what I mean? I think mm. more often than not, it's the other way around. I think the album. And the singles will sell the tour because if you've got a song that's been that's successful at radio or you've got a, a bunch of songs that are successful at radio, that's what draws people in to watch the shows. I don't think it's they don't come to watch a show because you have an album out. Do you know what I mean? Does, does, that make, yeah. does that make any sense? So, yeah. So it felt like the right time and it felt it feels good, man. I, again, it's, it's one of those it's one of those kinds of things where uh, <clears throat> we, 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 we wait for the first week to go by so you can kind of get some of the stats and the numbers rolling in and then you then you can sort of. I don't know if you can gauge success by album sales anymore so much because, I mean, you know, the refraction these days of what they used to be, as everyone knows, because of um, streaming platforms and, and, and the, the digital music platforms. But, yeah, we'll just, you know, we're going to sort of hunker down and see what happens. But we, we do have that show on Sunday that we're streaming to sort of celebrate the album release, which is going to be cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then we're just going to we're just going to quietly sit back and, and hope that the, that the sales tick over and that we, we can we can get a good spot on the on the charts. You know what I mean?
Let's talk about the record itself then. See this pace in Parabellum is if you want peace, prepared, uh, prepare for war. Um, yeah. Is that war internal or external, Sean? <laughs> I think it's all of those things. I think I think you, I have an internal battle all the time. I have uh, a, a, a few of my own mental issues that I've had, that I've had my whole life that that don't just disappear. And you need to you need to actively you know I, I have I have a couple therapists that I see on a regular basis just to just to kind of one one does deals with one side and one and another guy deals with a different aspect. But um, and then the external one obviously is clear. If you just open your eyes and look around you, you know what I mean. It's it's uh, it's it, it's just, it seems like. Uh, on a on a natural and environmental perspective, the Earth is trying to shrug us off the planet, and then and then as a societal aspect, we're all trying to take each other out. So it's like mm. it seems like it seems like it's a battle just to be a regular human being that that feels uh, safe and secure in a in a world that that is kind of feeling like anything can happen. And every single time you think, okay, cool, uh, this is this is this has got to be it, right? This has got to be the pinnacle of the year. It it says, well, no, 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 hang on. Hold my beer. Here's another. Here's another thing. Big time. Good. Like right now, right now we we've got tornado warnings where I'm where I'm at in Nashville um, for the whole day because of this these 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 hurricanes, right? So now, and I mean, like like they were really necessary. I mean, it's, parts of Texas have been completely destroyed. And it, again, I mean, how much is this going to take before people just completely snap, man? So. Yeah, it's external. Uh, it's, it's 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 often an internal battle, but I think these days it's it's the external uh, influences that make the internal battle more difficult. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's a good. But that's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good point you made. I like that it's deep. Uh, there's <laughs> loads of thought in it. No, no. The thing is, Sean, like, like straight up. I don't feel like bands that write radio rock songs get enough respect, right? Like you, like is is that a is that fair comment? Like when I when I hear you lay out the kind of themes that you're writing about, mm -hmm. and that that you are open about yeah. about your own vulnerabilities as well, which I think is fucking brilliant, man. <laughs> like when you're when you're putting that out there, um, it's a bit more than just being lumped in with a bunch of bands that all don't get respect. Well, I, I think in in general, um, rock is, is 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 being marginalized. If you look at if you look at the, the uh, and, and metal, of course, as well. But if you look at the the Billboard Awards and you look at the Academy Awards, whatever, this, all the, all the music ones that, that I don't mm. really pay attention to, which the Grammys, for example, I know the yeah. Grammys is for acting, but uh, they they don't even you know have a rock band on the stage anymore the the, the, the yeah. final flag bearers for rock were um the food fighters basically and they were the ones that were invited to every every single yeah. show just to just say well look we still we still support rock yeah the new, they, the new red the new red hot chili peppers yeah, who were the exactly. band that they were doing it with beforehand yes yeah, exactly. spot on. so, so they, they the food fighters i guess have now had their run in because the last time i saw it was aerosmith came out and um post malone played guitar with him and i was like yeah i saw I, that Yes, yeah, so I'm like, okay, cool. So that's that's how they're going to say they represented rock. Fine, I, I I'm not buying it. And then you know the categories are always marginalized. I don't even announce them. It's sort of like it's sort of in the the chyron that runs below at the bottom of the things. Like, oh, and this rock band won that. And and then then within the category, it's ridiculous. It's like there's not even rock bands in the category anymore. Now you got you got guys like you know uh, what was it? There was there's that there's that trio of uh, of rappers that were in the rock category last time for best rock. Oh, album. It was Migos. Yeah, 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 yeah. How is that a rock band? How is that a, a, a group that belongs in the rock category? I still don't understand. So it's, it's almost like they're just pushing us completely, uh, 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 yeah, off to the verge. But there's, there's, the other problem is, is I think that a lot of rock music has become so dumbed down, man. It's it's like if you listen, how many songs can you listen to about being in the VIP room at the strip club, um, you know, doing blow off a hooker's ass? It's 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 like okay, I've heard that since the '80s. Motley Crue covered that bass. You know what I mean? Um, and and I think that, that that's a lot to do with it as well. And and Honestly, I think that what really happened when rock became sterilized was when Creed was the biggest rock band on the planet. I think that's when kids really thought, well, okay, well, hang on. If my parents aren't dropping me off at the show and trying to convince me not to go in, but they're coming in with me and buying merch with me, then rock's no longer what I want to listen to because I'm not pissing my parents off anymore. But if you if you put on a, a, a rap track by, you know, name any of them and it's all of this, um, you know, sexualization and money throwing and bitches and hoes that and it's, it's basically you know disgraceful stuff 
d- depending on who you listen to this, I mean, uh, Will Smith was like the cleanest rapper on the planet. Um, but he listens to are, they more da- are they more dangerous than we are, though, Sean? I, I think I think they they are more dangerous to us as parents. Like, so if, if you're, you know, if you're, my parents would have hated rap as much as they hate rock, or as much as they hated rock. But um, I think that when again. Creed was that band that came in and it was look they wrote great songs or whatever but it, it, they just and with them they brought that the Christian element as well so they, now you've got not only is the biggest rock band on the planet uh, 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 you know, your parents are fans of them with you so you, you can't disagree on the musical tastes which I guess is for some families quite nice but they also bring in the big Christian element which is which a, a lot of rock doesn't really care about in fact rock mm. has always kind of lent more to the darker side so I, I felt like for me that that was that was the beginning of, it, of of the turning of the tides. I mean, there's still been there's still obviously been bands that have been big since then. So it's not it's not necessarily it doesn't hold up across the board. But I think that was when even I was like, okay, man, you know, when my when my mom was whistling a Creed song once, I was like, what what are you doing? Why are you why are you listening <laughs> to that? You know, um, and I, I, I for, and I think that was it. I think that there's also a lot more of an element of danger as far as a lot of the, a lot of the rappers sing about guns and and shooting and you know you got you got your dmx's and those kinds of guys that are they're they're almost like openly glorifying gun violence in a sense you know and how and, and i mean lil wayne i dated a girl that lil wayne was her favorite and that dude's talking about guns and pills and drugs and hoes all the time and if you, if you think as as what used to be scary for for parents was when 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 guys wanted to put on makeup and do their hair up like with you know with hairspray and, yeah. and, and put on tight little jeans and go and go you know I don't know. Do a bunch of blow in the bathroom while they while they bang some some chick in a stall. Uh, that was dangerous to the parents then. But then when yeah. when, you, when you have a wholesome image like Creed, who by behind the scenes was obviously never as wholesome as that of, of, at all. But the wholesomeness of it kind of said that was a big big stamp on rock music, saying okay, if that's the if that's what's risen to the top of our pile, then then certainly it's it's no longer got its edge to it. That that, that sort of makes parents go. You, you, they want to they want to block it out because it's you know it's it's giving you a positive message. It's singing about Jesus Christ and it's rock that's kind of not that heavy. You know what I mean? So it's like okay, we've turned a corner here. But I, I think I think also there's 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 hope for it. I mean, there's definitely a bunch of bands that that are um, are making some sort of noise now. It's I, I I really don't pity new bands at this in this in this age that we live in now, especially not this year. But I mean, just just even the past five years or so, I, I think it's way more difficult to to even make a career out of this. I think that there's uh, so much, you know, this, again, the, 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 the major share of the market is in your alternative music now. So you look at rock stations in the States just disappearing. I mean, uh, WAAF in, in, in Boston, for example, was a huge radio station that was just bought up by a Christian company in February and they flipped it and now it plays, uh, you know, AC contemporary stuff. Uh, I, that's terrifying because that station was 50 years old and it was, it was a stalwart station in the rotation on a tour, you know, you know that that the, the, one of the big DJs there, Mistress Carey, everybody knows her. Everybody knows her in the business. She's a, she's basically an icon of the industry, and she found herself without a job. That's insane to me. So it just shows that. But the the, the other thing that I find very interesting though is the, the festivals, the rock festivals, are always huge affairs. You know what I mean? There's always Massive. a ton of people, and, and and especially if you go to let's say South America, where it's where it's, there's like there's this intense like hunger for 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 rock music. Um, it just seems like the sort of, you know, that the America's kind of there's it's it's, it's sort of a <clears throat> you almost have to hide it like like if you have a if, if you have a belief that you don't want somebody to know about it. it's almost like oh I don't listen to rock but then you close you sit in the closet and you rock out to your middle and you come back out and it's like oh yeah we're listening to you know uh, Selena Gomez again are we perfect it's it's, it's a, it feels kind of like that in, in some can sense. I throw can I throw something else into this because this is the fight that I fight all the time Sean like the lit- quite literally why I moved from England to America is because mm. I want rock to get its place back <laughs> at the table like it's yeah. literally that's my, it's my fucking mission to be part <laughs> of that but when for a long while I think they looked the the, the mainstream looked at rock music and we looked old, man. Yeah. We give yeah. we give reverence to the past as we should to the people yeah. that laid the foundations. But that shouldn't be the be all and end all. And if you're no. not bringing through new bands, or you're not bringing through new ideas and new scenes, yeah. Yeah. do you think do you think that we are reaching a stage where 
in this decade because we're coming out of the first decade where on a mainstream level we had yeah. no imprint on pop culture do you yeah. think that'll change this decade because i feel like there's exciting different challenging bands alongside bands like yourselves and alter bridge that are like gateways into this shit yeah i i I don't know. I, 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 you, it is kind of interesting to say that, that that's, that's true. But you also got to remember in that last decade, you had about three phases of the genre shifting. You know, you had, well, let's look at the 2000s, the early 2000s. When we first came to the States, um, there was some metal that was at the top. It was mostly new metal. So you had your Papa Roach, you had Limp Bizkit. And, and you know, the other corn and, and those kinds of names at the top. Yeah. Then it shifted to kind of a more sort of an emo sound came out that, that put bands like, um, no, like I even, yeah, I don't even know any, more, any of those bands, but like, you know, like yeah. my chemical romance came out and, and, yeah. and uh, that kind of thing. So they rose to the top for a while. Then that sort of died out. Then you had the screamo, which came out. And then, the, so then you got bands again that I, 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 I don't have much yeah. knowledge of. Um, and then that died out and then it kind of went back to the sort of now, now we're almost in a, in a, in a kind of a, we're retro sounding bands are cool. So you got your, uh, your Greta Grand band. Fleet. Coming in. Yeah. yeah. And you got, you got uh, I think is it airwave that sounds like they got that ACDC kind of vibe. Airborne. There. Airborne. There we go. So it's like, you know, there's that kind of thing as well. And what we just do is we just sort of silently chug away in the background and, and you get bands that just do what they do. And, and um, you know, uh, I would say bands like, so cause we were on, yeah, your bands like Slipknot have been pretty much sort of delivering what the, their sound is for every album. They, they haven't strayed too far <clears throat> and been too experimental, which, which they are at times. But you don't want to be like, <clears throat> for example, I love Corn to Death, but they, they did a, a foray into EDM stuff. Yeah, and it wasn't, yeah, my, it wasn't my favorite. Stuff. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite. <clears throat> Even though I had a girlfriend who at the time was was a big EDM fan, I I while I wasn't my favorite, but it, it, it didn't mean I didn't like it. I I, I mm. loved that they were brave enough to say, "Hey, we're going to try something completely different," and that that's kind of you know that's that's a, a challenge and it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I don't. I just think that there's a lot of stuff that the the problem with this industry as well <clears throat> is they they'll sign a band that's mildly successful and then they'll sign a whole bunch of bands that sound exactly the same as that. And they'll push that as a genre or as a new mm. style. And that's, that's kind of what happened with screamo and emo and all those kinds of things. You know, they, there was that, uh, the, the one band will do well. So then all of the, all of the sort of copycats or similar types will come out, will come out. And I think why they, <clears throat> they die out so fast or well, they have that, they have that like, you know, three, four year, five, maybe five, six year run is, that it's just crammed down your throats. Every single band sounds exactly the same. And if you think when my when I was a kid and music was my really important to me, I listened to Sepultura, Pantera, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, PJ Harvey, Pixies, Soundgarden, and none of those bands sound like any of the other bands. <clears throat> but if you if you put up a uh, uh, any of these these genre these these cool little fads that happen and you put the bands back to back. It's I'm, I'm I'm I mean I'm very much afraid to say that it sounds to me to be very similar to each you know, to, to each other. They all have <clears throat> especially sorry, especially that one that one kind of genre that had there's the screamy guy and then there's the singy guy the clean you know sing I mean? guy yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so that, that that was a thing that was like you weren't in that that in that cool kids club unless you had that formula. So that's the thing is that then they all come out and I mean if you have a guy who's singing. And then it gives it out to the guy who who barks a couple times into the mic, and it comes back to the guy who's singing, and everybody's doing that. Then it all sounds the same, and then eventually people go, "Well, I've I've now got this in seventeen different flavors. They're all sort of vanilla based, but I, you know they've got different sprinkles on top." I think that makes people go, "Okay, I want something new. I, I want to, you know, or, or maybe they grow out of it. I don't know." But the, mm. the fact remains, <clears throat> the fact remains that bands like those kinds of bands. Um, are not as big as they once were. I mean, we did a tour with Red, Red Jumpsuit Apparatus, and yeah. they were a big emo band when they came out. And by the time they were touring with us, they sounded more like a metal band. They they had dropped the they dropped the the the, uh, the some of the singy sort of you know the the emo singy stuff, and it was way way heavier. It actually, kind of more resembled Corn. Um, <clears throat> so there was a complete genre shift for them, and 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 you know the, at one point they were riding high because that 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 sound was such a big thing in the pop culture. Um, but yeah, you're right. I, it doesn't really feel like the teens had much of an effect. Uh, rock had, you know, rock really, you know, because even even in in the in the two thousands, up until ten, and maybe a couple of years into the into the teens, 
um, places like Hot Topic and Spencer's were the yeah. spot to get your clothing. You know what I mean? That yeah. was where for real. that was the only place to dress from, especially for teens. And that was if you could get merch into those stores, you'd you'd, you'd made a huge inroads into the into the the teenaged angst um, sort of merch buying market because <clears throat> it was the, the place where they would go get their stuff. Now you go into a hot topic, it, it's, it's, it's unrecognizable to what it used to be. It used to be this gothic haven of misery and gloom. And you, can get, <laughs> you know, you could, you could buy your, your hair dye and your black lipstick, your piercings and your, and your baggy pants all in the same spot. Now it's more, you know, if you want to go get some adult swim merch and some, maybe some band tees, but you're really there to just see what's, uh, what's currently uh, popular in like the anime scene. And, you know, it's, it's, so it's, it's been a dramatic shift in, in, in about 10 years. And that shows, <clears throat> I think that reflects on how society is also moving. Its interests have changed. Yeah. It, you know, there was a, there was a time in rock and uh, where pandering to, or, or, or making accessible to, a, a gothic fan base and a very dark and somber fan base m ha was a very successful business model. And clearly mm. that's no longer the case. And I don't know if there's less goths on the planet or <clears throat> if they, I uh, hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I, I think it's, it, there's always going to be a shift. And I think what happens is ultimately uh, you, the, you, there's, the, there's now also been like the resurgence of, of, 80s type bands. And I, I, as soon as I hear them, I turn the radio. I'm not a big 80s rock rock guy myself <clears throat> excuse me but I, I i do like 80s pop music uh i like 70s metal i like uh, i like 90s metal i like you know I, I like pretty much all genres of music with the exception of a few um but there seems to be like this nostalgic thing now where <clears throat> like we talked about earlier greta van fleet and um uh airborne and then you and those those bands aren't even nostalgic those are those are those are actual clones i mean i'm sorry if Greta Van Fleet had ever come out and said, well, we've never heard of Led Zeppelin, I would have laughed my fucking ass off. Because it's a, it's a direct, it's like they went back in time and got some, some pretty little guys to come up on stage and sound like Led Zeppelin, and it's, and it's working out. <clears throat> it's, it's, a great, it's a great idea. Um, but what's interesting is, is, is that to me, that doesn't seem innovative. You know what I mean? So if you want innovation, that's tough too, because every song has been written. Let's be honest. The Beatles mm. did most of that. They wrote most of the fucking good songs on the planet. Um, and then you had the, the, you know, the, the Metallicas and the, and the Panteras and the Sepulturas. Those are, those are, the, those are my favorites from, from the, you know, the late eighties into the nineties and, and they wrote all the metal songs already. So at this point you you basically, you, you, you're plumbing the depths of there's not much left and it's, and it's, and so to be innovative is probably more difficult, I think, but to come out and be an exact clone, I think is not the right answer either. You know what I mean? If you come out and you say, well, you know, I, I mean, for God's if sake, you can't, like, if you can't beat them, join them. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, <clears throat> then, then you have to wonder, um, what is this next decade going to sound like? Um, is it going to be, uh, I mean, God, we, we've already done the electronic meshed with, with rock and metal sound with, with a, sort of that brief EDM flirtation that, uh, corn had and some, some other guys tried it out. Um, and then you've got bands that just do what they do and they, and they don't give a shit which way there's genre shift. So like we're one of those bands, Slipknot's one of those bands, you know, uh, Deftones is one of those bands. There's just a whole bunch of bands that go, well, we, we sound like this. This is what we're good at. <clears throat> and then you have other bands that have these, these evolutions. <clears throat> and whether you can call them evolutions or, or what, what, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but you have a band like Thrice who sort of yeah. re resurrected their career with that album uh, to the, the two albums past. And then you have other bands like, like Godsmack who have gone completely they've they've sort of abandoned what i feel is their core sound and gone he is literally and I, i'm not a big fan of sully so i don't you know the rest of the band guys i love them but sully can go fuck himself um but he's basically sort of pushing it in a completely rock you know that's he, he's pushing that band in like a an arena rock kind of sound if you listen to that stuff i can't believe that's coming from godsmack and i used to like the old godsmack sound now i get why he's doing it he's trying to broaden his 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 audience Mm. And to do that, you know, I mean, he's what? How many number one singles have come off this album so far for, for Godsmack, right? And it's it's good for the band. It's great, but it's a complete. It, it's 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 like it's it's a shift in the, in the sound of Godsmack. Yeah, Godsmack is like riff, rah, barking, and then it goes back into a riff, and it's some heavy fucking drums. There's no there's no melody in Godsmack. You know what I mean? It, 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 there's no there's no clean singing and stuff like it, it, there was a, there was kind of like a, a dude broness to it that 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 made Godsmack cool. 
Um, and I, I, again, I, I, I don't dis- I don't disagree with the decision. I'm just saying that they've done that, and it's clear. It's a very obvious departure from what they were before, and I get why they did it, and it, it makes sense. Um, but uh, yeah, then there's other bands that just sort of yeah do their thing. So I'm, I, I don't know what what's going to happen. Uh, you know, can I ask? <laughs> can I ask, yeah. Sean? Where the yeah. the fit? Where the Seether fit into this? I don't know. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was asked the other day. Yeah, because the thing is, alternative used to be bands like Pearl Jam, Nirvana. Alice in Chains, that was the alternative moniker yeah. and, and genre. Now alternative is 21 Pilots and, uh, you know, Hayley Williams and Meg Myers and it's all these people. There's no guitars. It, mm. Guitars are, are, are almost non, non, non-existent in, in, in alternative bands now. So we don't we don't fit in, you know, if you listen to the the, 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 the satellite stations on the, rock, on the rock stations, they'll play us. We don't, definitely don't fit on the metal stations because it, even our heavier stuff that they, they, they wouldn't play on there if it's not a single. You know what I mean? It, that's the, mm. the problem is the band is represented by a single, not by its album. Which is which on a thing like satellite, you would think that they could they could spread it out a, a, a little bit more evenly. But then we also don't get played for love or fucking money on alternative channels. You know what I mean? Because right. uh, we were told. But then there, here's the hypocrisy of that: Foo Fighters, alternative channels; Tool, alternative channels; even with seven or eight minute long singles. Uh, Green Day. Oh, there's another band that's completely changed its sound to, to be yeah, almost yeah. unrecognizable. For real. Uh, and, more, and more recently, I was blown the fuck away. Um, <clears throat> I'm a big Pearl Jam fan. I've sort of lost that over the past few albums. Okay. But man, I heard a song on the radio because I was listening to Alternative. Just, just, I'm trying to get an idea of what, what it actually is. And the song came on, it was the, that song with Dancing in the Dark, whatever it is. Now, I, I thought, well, wow, this song is cool. But as soon as I heard the voice, I was like, there's no fucking way this is Pearl Jam. There's no guitar in this song. Is this, is this, the, one, is this the one that sounds like the Talking Heads? Yeah. Is that the one that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I know the one you mean, yeah. And it's kind of a cool song, but I, I, I was like, not from Pearl Jam. Do it as a, do it as a side project. But anyway, you know, that's just because I'm a purist. But I, 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 <laughs> you know, but so that song was all, all, all on alternative radio. I don't know that a, a different Pearl Jam song would have made it onto alternative radio, to be honest, um, because the rest of the album sounds nothing like that song. Um, mm. And then, but so I'm wondering why they make those exclusions for certain bands, but then they tell other bands, oh, no, 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 you've got a scream in your song. You can't be. Then you look at a song like uh, just, uh, Jumpsuit by 21 Pilots. Yeah. <laughs> A screaming jumpsuit at the end. I know because my daughter imitates them all the time. So that that discounts that you can't ever scream in an alternative song. Uh, yeah. They also they'd, prob- they'd, prob- they'd probably play Little Peep as well, which has got screaming on it yeah. and that kind of thing. Because yeah. like, I know this. I know this is a major like clang of a name drop. But I had a chat with Billy Corgan once that completely yeah. changed my perception of alternative. And that is, if you are looking at the alternative and it mirrors the mainstream, what the mm-hmm. fuck is it the alternative to? Exactly. <laughs> that's, the, you know what, that's great. That, that is something that I can, those are words I can live by because that was the next thing is that the, the alternative and, and what then becomes pop is interchangeable too, for the most part. Um, and yeah, because so, anyway, so you got because the, the Foo Fighters will also transcend to pop, even with a song like let's say "Run," full of screaming yeah. too. And again, that discounts the screaming argument. So it's it's almost like the problem with alternative is they look at a station in LA like K Rock, and K Rock is the coolest station on the fucking planet, supposedly, which which very rarely plays. And it, it, that, you know, when I lived in LA, I listened to K Rock because they, they played the same four bands over and over again, which was namely System of a Down, Green Day. Uh, and I forget the other two, but it was probably a lot, lot of lot of Weezer here, man. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. I, moved, yeah. I moved from England. I live in LA now, so yeah, <laughs> a lot of Weezer on K Rock. Yeah, so so those are the, those are, they were kind of just sort of cycled through that stuff. They, you know, they didn't really like to to introduce new stuff too often because I think that they kind of, Sublime was big on there too. But yes, um, you know, so the, the, then alternative when K Rock allows a new song onto its playlist, and I've been told this by radio departments at, at various labels, when K Rock accepts something, <clears throat> then the other alternative stations jump on it. But they all wait, and and and, and K Rock is, is the is the barometer for what the next move is, and K Rock also will be the one that uh, will sort of alert the the pop radio that ooh there might be somebody that we might be worth checking out here as well. So K Rock holds a lot of sway and a whole lot of power. I don't know if it's still so much the case if, if you aren't in California, but. Mm. 
certainly that's what I was that was what was explained to me years ago, which may have been hog shit because they just didn't want to do their job and, and, and try and get it on. <laughs> but it sounds, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say it sounds viable that that that's the case. But I, I think also, you know, the, the radio station is a business and they want to play what is going to be listened to by, by the most people. And I don't understand, like, look, for but we, then we've got a cool alternative station here in Nashville. It's one of four or five that actually plays us and they'll play us and they'll play 21 Pilots and then they'll play, you know, maybe a Foo Fighters song and then they'll play. So th what I'm saying is the, 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 the range, they bounce between true alternative, which was, which I think is still the guitar and drums kind of bands, to the new alternative and back. So they play, a, it's a pretty cool station. Um, but again, the, the, we, we all have to just look at the, what, what radio is and say how how because that's 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 the big commercial for the band right that's that's the big that's the thing that's going to say okay here's an album this is yeah an there's idea your shop window yeah exactly yeah. And, and so <clears throat> whether you write for that I've never written for the radio because I think that's that horseshit and that's why I also don't hire writers I haven't yeah. I can I can name you a laundry list of bands that, that they don't don't write their own songs pretend they do and then claim the accolades of of the number one single you know what I mean. And then, or, or, or then they they work with guys and producers who are uh, pop producers, and then they sort of they gloss up their album sound, and then they 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 focus directly on how how much money are we going to make off of these songs? How can we maximize the exposure? How poppy can we make this? And I I, I would gladly name something, except I think I've already got myself in shit about the Sully comment. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, uh, I think I, I, so. That that's a they have a directive to do that and, and, and to 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 write other stuff. So when I write, I just write for what I want to hear. And the the the, the fact is, at the end of the day, the heavier stuff never sees the light of day because it, that's not going to be the best the best vehicle for um, for a radio station, for example. They they yeah. you know, they what they want to play something that's more uh, broadly acceptable. Um, and will will we'll target more of their audience rather than have some polarizing song on that you know that's got a whole bunch of screaming and, and you don't want to be you don't want that playing at nine a.m. when you're on the way to work right I mean some I guess some people might I probably say this, <laughs> I, I probably say the screaming for the drive home to be honest but um, yeah so there's a whole thing is all it's all it's all a big game so what, what I'm saying is that for example that for the, I was just blown away when when that happened with with uh, 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 another band. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll just stick with the God's Max example. Uh, that was that was to me. I I, I don't know. I felt and I saw a, a real change in their sound there, and that was that was a, a very well uh, orchestrated move on their part. Um, mm. Not my favorite God's Max stuff, but certainly you can tell that it's 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 trying to create. It's trying to do something different for God's Max, which I don't understand why they would have to because they're already such a big band. You know what I mean? They are yeah. already such a well loved band. They are. If you mention metal bands, I've 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 had most of the God's Max albums in my catalog. The only problem was I I ever made the mistake was actually meeting Sully, and th that was one of those guys that I just didn't. We just didn't get on very well. But I, I'm you know I'm good friends with Shannon. The drummer is one of my one of my he's one of the sweetest guys on the fucking planet. Um, and and then every once in a while you just you know you just rub each other the wrong way and that's just what happens. And this kumbaya, yeah. kumbaya fucking metal bullshit doesn't happen. It's not it's not like that. Um, yeah. But but you know I, I I get what they were doing. But again, you watch you know we we toured with those guys on like a, on one of those monster tours or whatever it was fucking rock yeah. star tours, and they had big fucking crowds, man. I don't think that we could say we could claim we brought a third of that audience at the mm. time. And this was this was going back about I don't know seven or eight years ago, so they, I, I guess what I'm trying to understand is <clears throat> again why why the shift in sound that's so dram so dramatic mm. for a band that didn't need it, you know what I mean? Just to start a side project and come out with that stuff, and everyone's still going to listen to it because it's Sully Erna from Godsmack. So I, I was a little bit blown away by that. So because you, you well, have to you always have to remember the fan base, you know what I mean? Of course, of course, I can't. For I can't believe, because like, I've been interviewing bands since 2002, I can't believe that this is the first time that our paths have crossed. When we meet in, <laughs> when we, when we meet in person, Sean, yeah. uh, like we will have this chat without a camera running, my man. Yes. So th <laughs> thank you so much for your time. I really no, hope man. that this album has an impact.